when you begin to appreciate the magnitude of the, the, the global changes that transpired from, during this, yeah, it makes perfect sense because yeah. geologically, yeah, we're going to go out and we'll begin to teach people how you, you can recognize these boundaries and how um, it becomes clear that, yes, huge swaths of the Earth's surface were completely erased. Uh, you know, when you're talking about erosional events, erosional events always co coincide with depositional events. And so one of the things that when you begin to look at the, the, the what I would call, let's say, ca uh, cataclysmic geomorphology, you begin to see that there are places where large tracts of the Earth's surface have been stripped away and other places where vast tracts of the Earth's surface have been buried, you see, because if you strip away from place A, it's going to bury place B, wherever it ends yeah. up, um, if, it, if it's not fully carried out um, to the ocean. Uh, but there are many places where, you know, you've got hundreds of feet of sediment that are essentially entombing the pre-existing landscape. And you've got other places where that pre-existing landscape is gone, completely gone. And you might be standing on the modern landscape, but the pre-existing landscape might have been hundreds of feet over your head. But that material is gone, see? So whatever was going on there culturally, you, you, there's not going to be any trace of it left. Conversely, if it's, a, if it's in a depositional environment, it's possible if that deposition... Uh, it was low energy enough that there could be things preserved. And I think that we're, we're going to be finding some of that stuff buried in some cases, hundreds of feet under the surface, present surface of the earth. Mm -hmm. In other cases, you know, 200, 300, 400 feet below sea level. But bear in mind, when you have these huge meltwater pulses, you're going to talk about a very agitated ocean for a period of time. And as the ocean is rapidly rising like that, you're going to have very high energy typhoons. You're going to have storm surges. You're going to have just the wave action alone of this rapidly rising sea level is going to tend to be highly erosive to anything that was there on the previous coastline. Because when you go back to this period, say 15,000 years ago, you're looking at a coastline that's you know 400 feet lower than sea level. So it's, it's going to be massively shifted in a lot of places from where the present coastline is. Yeah, in some so cases, that, that's hundreds of miles, right? In some cases, yes. Yeah. So it, that rising sea level, that highly energetic rising, rapidly rising sea level is going to tend to erase those coastlines. So it, but, but even given that, I still will predict that we're going to begin finding more and more evidence once we get... The, the technological capabilities to really explore archaeologically at those, you know, below the, below the sea, uh, below sea level that we're going to begin finding stuff that's yeah. showing, you know, what was going on there 5,000, 10,000, 15, 20,000 years ago. Yeah. Out at the edge of the continental shelf. Right. In a lot of cases, yes, it does coincide with the continental shelf. And One cool thing that people can do, I've done this with Google Earth, is you can look at some river systems – yeah. that are coming off the landmass and going, uh, just pouring into the ocean. If you're looking at Google Earth and looking to the sea bottom, you can see that the canyon that that river is in continues way out under the ocean, which is only possible if that used to, you know, when that was dry land. So you right. can see the erosional features of the river continue out sometimes, you know, many, many dozens of miles beyond the present shoreline, showing you how, how the, you know, that the ocean has risen up over that canyon since those meltwater pulses. Yeah. Mike, did you have a question before we move on to the next? You were going to ask something? No, I was just going to comment with your, your remark about the uh, canyons. Those would be the most likely places to look for civilization, evidence of civilization. Ah, uh, yeah. In, in underwater archaeology, because that's where people live. Next to the rivers. Except, right? except, to the rivers. Mike, except that those canyons are massive meltwater conduits the force of the water flowing through those canyons would have been enormous so part of my point is that yes and in fact it's it's true whether you're looking at submarine canyons or if you're looking at um river valleys uh above sea level you know almost all of the rivers you can look at at one point carry these enormously augmented flows uh that would have essentially wiped off, wiped away anything that had, had existed there. 
um, villages or communities or even towns or cities, you know. Some of the, the, the early towns like uh, Jericho and uh, Katol Hoyak, let me see if I, I used to know how to say it. Yeah, Chattel Hoyak or something like that. Chattel Hoyak, yeah, Chattel yeah, Hoyak, Chattel yes. Chattel Hoyak, yeah. Yes, are between eight and 9,000 years old. Now, there's no reason we couldn't say such such a, 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 a an urban area couldn't have existed 15,000 years ago. I mean, that's just an assumption. But the thing is, is that a, a city like either one of those existing in, in most ri any river valley is, go is not going to survive this, these transitions that, you're, that we've just been looking at here. I'm going to yeah, pull up some interesting graph here to further try to. Um, well, I was going to ask about that, too, that, you know, if uh, this period where the sea levels were 400 feet lower. Um, you know, there's going to be isostatically, there's going to be a completely different situation in terms of elevation on the ground. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, we, mm -hmm. how, how do we know that those uh, continental shelves weren't actually much higher than they are now? Because you would have had these huge ice caps sitting on the ground, pushing down in, some other in area. different areas than where the ocean water is now pushing down, um, et cetera. Well, one of the things now that's been well documented is the, the presence around the great ice sheets of what is called the glacial forebulge. Because as you push down here, it's like the rim rises up. So you've got around the, around the periphery of the ice sheets, you have tremendous vertical movements. Under the ice sheet itself, it's pushing down. But around the rim, the response is to bulge up. So then when the ice is removed, under that, in this, this basin, it begins to rise while the fore bulge begins to drop back down. So yes, that's one of the important points here is that, you know, for nearly 100 years, going on maybe 80 or 90 years, the idea has been out there of lateral motions of the Earth's plates. Since about the 1960s, continental drift has been an accepted part of geological activity right, geophysical activity of the earth. But I think what's been underappreciated is the possibility of the vertical motions. And that's a, what we, we were talking about in previous podcasts. The, and it's very possible that some of these vertical motions were considerable. I mean, hundreds, if not even a thousand or more feet. So that being plausible, if there's any kind of a scientific explanation at all for the uh, idea of a subsiding landmass in the in in within an ocean basin, it would be the isostatic changes, the isostatic adjustments of the Earth's crust due to glacial loading and unloading. And so, to set the context, we're looking at this. You're seeing this image right now, right, of the present coastlines. We see it. Yeah, and so we're going to toggle back and forth between now and say late glacial maximum 15 to 18,000 years ago. So when you do this, you know, and if you look very carefully, you will see, I'll just say, look down here at the peninsula of Florida, what happens when I toggle. You see Florida itself is about double the width. Oh yeah. You see that? that is awesome. That is yeah. Neat. Yeah, and you look at the, the islands down here, Cuba, you, you could almost swim from Florida to the, to the islands that are now wow. much, much smaller. And so, again, this would have been a, a, a place where you could have had an emergent civilization. You could have had um, What's uh, the, the thing in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean right there. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. What is that? <laughs> Could it be the Azores Plateau? I think it might be. Okay. 